So good day everyone. We are now done to the topic 6 which is recognition and management of specific injuries and conditions. So the reporters are Huban Jessame, Geraldo Shane, yours truly, Kainagi Ernesto, and Kudi Don Lee. So the contents of our report are recognizing different sports injuries, the foot, the ankle and lower leg, the knee and related structures, the thigh, hip, groin, and pelvis, the shoulder complex, the elbow, forearm, wrist, and hand, the spine, the thorax and abdomen, and the head. Objectives Explain the recognition and management of specific injuries and condition. Second, aware of the different sports injuries and injuries prevention. And last is guidelines to prevent sports injuries. Recognizing different sports injuries. So no matter how much time is spent in, on injury prevention, sooner or later, the, an injury occurs. So it is either acute or the traumatic injuries, and chronic or the overuse injuries. So under the acute or the traumatic injuries, we have, we have what we call fractures, dislocations, subluxations, contusions, ligament sprains, muscle strains, muscle soreness, and nerve injury. And chronic or the overuse injuries have tendin tendinitis, tenosynovitis, bursitis, osteoarthritis and trigger points so the first one is fracture so let's define first what is fracture a fracture is a bone that is broken the same as a crack or a break a bone may be completely fractured in any number of ways like crosswise lengthwise or in any multiple pieces so anatomy of the bone of the long bone so we have diaphysis epiphysis Articular, articular cartilage and per, perosteum. So the first one is diaphysis. So it is a main shaft of long bone, a hollow cylindrical shape, a thick compact bone, and its function is to provide so, strong support without cumbersome weight. So the second one is the epiphysis. Both ends of long bone made of cancellous cancellous bone filled with red marrow. It is bulbous bul shape and its function is to provide attachment for muscle and stability to joint. So the third is the articular cartilage, a layer of hyaline cartilage that covers articular surface of epiphys epiphysis. Its function is cushion joints and blows. It is a smooth surface for less friction. So the third, so the last one is the perosteum. It is dense with fibrous membrane that covers bone, attaches tendons firmly to bone, and contains cells that form and destroy bone, and contains blood vessels. And its function is, it is for the growth and repair, and sends branches into bone and essential to bone cell survival, survival and formation. So the signs and symptoms of a fractures are obvious deformity, point tenderness, swelling, pain with rom or the range of mo motion, and or crepitus. So fractures can occur via the following forces. First is tension, compression, bending, twisting, and shear. So as you can see in the picture, we have here what we call the types of bone fracture so first is the transverse fracture linear fracture oblique non-displaced fracture oblique displaced fracture spiral fracture green stick fracture and the comminuted fracture so the first is the transverse fracture a transverse fracture occurs when a bone breaks at 90 degree angle to the long axis of the bone this typically occurs when a blow transmits a large amount of force directly perpendicular to the bone. Transverse fractures re require a, an ortho orthopedic trauma surgeon. So the second one is the linear fracture. In a linear fracture, there is a break in the bone, but it does not move the bone. These patients may be trans 
may be observed in the hospital for a brief amount of time and can usually resume normal activities in a few days. So the third one is the oblique non-displaced fracture. It occurs when the bones cracks but maintains its proper posi position and alignment. A bone breaks but does not move out of the alignment. So the oblique displaced fracture simply means bone breaks into two or more pieces and moves out of the alignment. So the, sec so the next is the spiral fractures. Spiral fractures are complete fractures of a long bones that results from a rational force applied to the bone. Spiral fractures are usual, usually the result of high energy trauma and are likely to be associated with displacement. So next is a green stick fracture. A green stick fracture is a crack or, or break on one side of a long bone in the arm or leg that does not extend all the way through the bone. So children are more likely to have green stick fractures because their bones are softer and less brittle than, than an adult's. So the oblique displaced fracture simply means bone breaks into two or more pieces and moves out of the alignment. So the, sec so the next is the spiral fractures. Spiral fractures are complete fractures of a long bones that results from a rational force applied to the bone. Spiral fractures are usually the result of high energy trauma and are likely to be associated with displacement. So next is a green stick fracture. A green stick fracture is a crack or, or break on one side of a long bone in the arm or leg that does not extend all the way through the bone. So children are more likely to have green stick fractures because their bones are softer and less brittle than, than an adult's. So the last one is the comminuted fracture. So comminuted fracture is when the bone breaks into several pieces. Fracture healing, open versus closed fractures. So immobilization for a period of three to six weeks. So the osteoblast must lay down extra bone formation and form a, callu a callus. While the osteoclast, it helps to reshape the bone in response to normal stresses and strains. So dislocations and subluxation. So dislocation, a bone is forced out, out of alignment and stays out until it is either manually or surgically pull, put back into place or reduced. Commonly occurs in the shoulder, elbow, and fingers. So the subluxation, it is a bone pops out of its normal articulation but then goes right back into place. It commonly occurs in the shoulder and patella. So dislocations and subluxations may result in a rupture of st stabilizing ligaments and tendons surrounding the joint. So as you can see in the picture, a, a dislocation occurs when the bone, when the when the bones in a joint become separated or knocked out or of their usual position. Any joints in the body can become dislocated. So if the joint is partially dislocated, it is called subluxation. So the next one is the contusion. So contusion is the medical term for a bruise. It is the result of a direct blow or an impact such as fall. Contusions are common sports injuries. Most people think of a bruise as a black and blue spot. So this happens when small blood vessels get torn and leak blood under the skin. So ligament sprains. So sprains is an injury to a ligament that connects bone to bone. So a ligament is a tough and elastic band tissue that connects one bone to another. So the anatomy of synovial joint is we have articular or the hyaline cartilage, joint capsule, synovial membrane, and, syn and synovial fluid. So the mechanoreceptors is located in muscles, tendons, ligaments, and joints. So it provides information regarding the position of a joint. So the anatomical position of ligament determines what motion joint is capable of making. So a sprain is a stretching or tearing of ligaments, the tough bands of fibro fibrous tissue that connects two bones together in your joint. So the most, most common location of a sprain is our ankle. So the initial treatment 
includes rest, ice compression, and elevation. So the mild sprains can be successfully treated at home. So a sprain is caused by either a direct or indirect injury that knocks the, the joint out of position and overstretch. So for example is rolling your ankle. It's either while running, changing direction, or landing from a jump. Uh, types of the types of classification of ligament sprains which is the grade 1 sprain, grade 2 sprain, and grade 3. So in grade 1 sprain, stretching or slight tearing of the ligament with mild tenderness, swelling, and stiffness. So the ankles feels possible to walk with minimal pain. So the grade 2 pain, the grade 2 strain is more severe sprain but incomplete tear with moderate pain, swelling, and bruising. The last classification of sprain is the grade 3. It is a complete tear of the affected ligaments which severe swelling and bruising. So the ankle is unstable and walking like and walking is likely not possible because the ankle gives out and there is intense pain. What is muscle strain? Muscle strain, a stretch, tear, or rip in the muscle or tendon. Tendon are tissues that that connect muscles to, to the bone. So, ang, ang strain kay ma-feel ni mo, bigla-bigla lang. Then, ma-develop po siya, ma-develop po siya over time. You you can feel slightly stiff if you can feel the result of the pain. In it is a very limited movement. If maka agikag strain, limited na imong movements. Kasi uh, naman naman po siya uh, kinds of severity, which is the dam severity of damage, which is the grade one, grade two, and grade three muscle strain. Ang Ang grade 1 kay oh, ano pa siya kaning gamay. Then grade 2 kay medyo nagabuka na siya. And grade 3 kay buka na gid siya. Kaning makafeel na yun ka og sakit. Then muscle cramps. Involuntary muscle contraction. Muscles guarding muscles con contraction in response to pain. So, there is a muscle cramps. A muscle cramps is a uh, an uncontrollable pain uncontrollable pain siya sa muscle and usually dili dili ni mo na mabantayan kay bigla bigla lang siya mag mag cramps imuhang muscles muscle soreness acute onset muscle soreness and delayed onset muscle soreness DOMS uh ex, uh Delayed onset muscle soreness, which is developed during the actual activities. Example is this kanang naga training ta. Maka, ma, ma, kuandira ang delayed, delayed onset muscle soreness. Then, madalas na ni may tabo kaning pag mag switch dayon o another physical activities or exercise routine. So, makafeel ka og a muscle soreness. Confusion result when soft tissues are compressed between bone and external force. So, diri sa confusion is nag-resulta ni sa when tissues are compressed between between sa atong bone og external force. Kung gamitan na to siya external force. Nerve injuries. Nerve injuries usually involve compression or tension. Trauma can result in hypertisia and or paresthesia, neuritis, chronic nerve irritation. The nerve injuries may, may affect our brain ability to communicate with, with muscle or, uh, and our organs. Tendinitis, inflammation of a tendon. It is a commonly caused by the repeatedly activities. It is also painful and commonly happened 
in the elbow, the knee, the shoulder, hip, and in our thumb. Tenosynovitis. Inflammation of a tendon and its synovial set. The most causes of this is chronic overuse on the wrist. Another thing is when you leave a child in a car seat. Borsitis. Inflammation of the borsa sac. It is located in our ten tendon near the large joints in the shoulder, elbow, hip, and knee and knees. Example of bursitis are uh, throwing a baseball or lifting something overhead repeatedly, leaning on your elbow for a long period of time. Osteoarthritis, a wearing gown of hyaline cartilage. Common from uh, arthritis, it is usually occurs in the hand, hips, and knee, knees. Myofascial trigger point. Area of tenderness in a teeth band of muscle. It is a sensitive area in the muscles or connective tissue that becomes painful when it compressed. Healing process. Inflammatory response phase. Most critical phase of healing process begins immediately following injury. Pagoctis it debris. Chemicals release. Two to four days. This phase will long two to four days before the injury will heal. Fibroblastic repair phase. Fibroplasia hours, two weeks, signs and symptoms associated with implementation begin to decrease. Injury still tender to touch and painful with ROM. The skulls will last after four days to six weeks. Example of this is the sa skin scars which ako nang nang ano god na disgrasya syempre kapag na disgrasya man ka kay kay grabe man ang ang scars nga imo ang ma, ma makuha ana so mag last siya ma, nabilong siya sa fibroblastic repair phase kay dugay siya maayo 4 days to 6 6 weeks ang tagal and lastly, maturation remo removing phase. Long-term process realignment of scars tissues per tensile forces place on scars. Uh, this this phase will will last up to two years. So example ani kay kani mga mga fractures na sa bone ing ana kay Tugay man iyahang healing process. The foot. The foot has four ranges of motion. It moves upward during disinflection and downward during plantar flexion. Inward movement is known as inversion. Outward movement is inversion. The foot has 26 major bones which are split into three regions. The forefoot, the midfoot, and the hindfoot. The fourth foot consists of the palalanges of two bones and five metatarsal bones. Numbered 1 through 5 medial and 2 lateral, comprising the midfoot or the cuneiform, navicular and cuboid bones. The bones of the midfoot are also known as tarsal bones. The carcilneus, heel bone, which is the foot's larger bones, and the talus make up the hind boot. Example of injury, calcaneus or heel bone fractures. Etiology often occurs from landing after a jump or a fall from a height. Evolution fix can occur anteriorly at attachment of calcaneovacular ligament to substanaculum tali or posteriorly at the attachment of the talocalcaneal ligament. So for those who don't know, calcaneus or heel bone fractures is a fracture of the calcaneus or heel bone can be painful at disabling injury. This type of fracture commonly occurs 
during a high energy event such as a car crash or a fall from a ladder. When the heel is crushed under the weight of the body, when this occurs, the heel can widen, shorten, and become deformed. Signs and symptoms, swelling, the pain, inability to bear weight, deformity often not present, and recognition and management, it is the rise or rest, eyes, comprehension, compression, elevation, and x-ray. The ankle and the lower leg. The portion of the anatomy below the knee and above the ankle is the lower leg. It is composed of the thicker tibia, which is more medial, and the thinner fibula, which is more lateral. The ankle joint or the tolocrural joint is formed by the trichen distal portion of the fibula called the lateral mellulus. The trichen distal portion of the tibia called the medial mellulus, and a more or less cube-shaped tarsal bone called the talus that fits between the two mellulae. The ankle joint allows two motions, plantar flexion and dorsiflexions. The ankle joint is composed of the three categories, the tibia, fibula, and talus. The example of injury is the swelling. The swelling is a swe swollen ankle or leg can cause the power of part of the leg to appear larger, the, larger than normal. The swelling can make it difficult to work. To walk, it may be painful, but the skin over your leg feeling tight and stretch out. So swelling is the result of the increased movement of fluid, the white blood cells into the injured area. The release of chemicals and the compression of the nerves in the area of injury cause pain. The pain and swelling can keep the athlete from using the injured part or serving to protect it from further injury. So the, the recognition and management tape properly applied can provide some prophylactic protection. Poorly ap applied tape does not, does more harm than good. Tape that constricts soft tissues and blood circulation or disrupts normal biomechanical function can, in time, create unnecessary problems. Ankle bracing can also offer protection to the ankle joint. Braces may prevent lateral and inversion movement of the foot without inhibiting plantar flexion. The knee and related structures. The knee is one of the largest and most complex joints in the body. The knee joins the thigh bone or femur to the shin bone tibia. The smaller bone that runs alongside the tibia, fibula, and the knee cap patella are the, are the other bones that make the knee joint. An example of injury of this one is the neighborsitis. can be caused by overuse, arthritis, degenerative joint decrease, disease, injuries from kneeling, infection, or gout. So the neighborsitis is the inflammation of the small fluid-filled sac or bursa situated near your knee joint. Bursae, reduced friction and cushion pressures, pressure, points between your bones and the tendons, muscles, and skin near your joints. Any of the bursa in your knee can become inflamed, but knee bursitis most commonly occurs over the knee pap, kneecap or on the inner side of your knee below the joint. Recognition and Management Rest your knee, discontinue the activity that causes knee bursitis and avoid movements that worsen your pain. Take over the counter pain relievers. Short term use of an anti inflammatory drug such as aspirin, ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin, and others, or naproxen sodium, Aleve, others can help relieve pain. Apply ice. Apply an ice pack to your knee for 20 minutes at the time several times a day until the pain goes away and your knee no longer feels warm to the touch. Apply compression, use of a compress compressive wrap or knee sleeve can help reduce swelling. Elevate your knee, prop your affected leg on pillows to help reduce swelling in your knee. The thigh, hip, groin, and pelvis. The thigh is generally considered the part of the leg between the hip and the knee. The femur is the longest and strongest bone in the body. The hip joint is formed by articulation of the femur and innominate. The groin is an area of your hip between your stomach and thigh. It is located with your abdomen ends and your leg begin. 
The pelvis is the bony ring formed by two innominate bones, the sacrum and the coccyx. The function of the pelvis are to support the spine and the trunk and the to transfer their weight to the lower limbs. Examples of injury Quadriceps constitutions Cognition and management Cause of injury Direct blow to the thigh Constantly exposed to traumatic blows Sign of injury Pain Transitory loss of function Immediate bleeding of affected muscles Isthmosis Swelling Palpable knot The hip joint is formed by articulation of the femur with the innominate. For example, of injuries, hip sprain. Etiology, violent twist, foot planted and shrunk, moves opposite direction, and joint moves out of the anat anatomical norm. Treatment, x-ray to RO, FX price, analgesics may restrict the WB, Crutches, room, and progressive resistance. Exercise weight until pain free. The groin area of your hip between your stomach and thigh. It is located where your abdomen ends and your legs begin. Sample of injuries groin strain. Etiology area between thigh and abdomen. Adduction IR muscles. Any groin muscles, running, jumping, twisting, with ER and early part of season. If poor strength, roam, treatment. So price, when full roam and 80% strength, return to an RTP groin wrap. The pelvis is the bony ring of, formed by two innominate bones, the sacrum and the coccyx. The function of the pelvis are to support the spine and trunk and transfer their weight to the lower limbs. Sample of injuries, acute pelvic etiology generally defined as pain in the lower abdomen or pelvis lasting less than 3 months. In women, it can pose a challenging clinical scenario in which history and physical examination findings are often non-specific and the clinical prevent presentation of each condition can vary widely treatment takes for shock failure to position and ro internal injury the shoulder complex um, the anatomy of the shoulder complex allows for a great degree of mobility to achieve this mobility stability of the Complex is sometimes compromised and instability of the shoulder frequently leads to injury. Uh, particularly in those sports that involve overhead activity, sport activities such as throwing, swimming, or serving in tennis or volleyball place a great deal of stress on the supporting structures. Consequently, injuries related to overuse in the shoulder are common in the athlete. Composed of the clavicle, scapula, and humerus is an intricately designed combination of four joints, which is the glenohumeral joint, the acromioclavicular joint, and the sternoclavicular joint, and the flowing joint known as the scapulothoracic joint. So, the shoulder complex mobility is the result of a complicated dynamic connection between muscles, forces, ligament limitation, and body articulation. So, the articulation components of the shoulder complex, particularly the GH joint or the glenohumeral joint, are largely intended for flexibility and able to move and position the hand through a wide variety of space with the highest flexion of any part of the body so here are the example of injury the shoulder dislocation so um, the cause of shoulder dislocation is usually fall or blow to the shoulder so it means that the ball and socket bones of the shoulder are separated 
with the ball of the humerus out of prevention so to prevent this injury we should take care to avoid falls and better exercise regularly to maintain strength and flexible our joints and muscles so here are the recognition and management of shoulder dislocation um, so rest your shoulder don't repeat the specific action that caused your shoulder to dislocate and try to avoid painful movements limit heavy lifting or overhead activity until your shoulder feels better and apply ice then heat and putting ice on your shoulder helps reduce inflammation and pain use a cold pack a bag of frozen vegetables or a towel filled with ice cubes for 15 to 20 minutes um, at a time do this every couple of hours the first day or two after after two or three days when the pain and inflammation have improved hot packs or a hearing or a heating pad may help relax tight and sore muscles limit heat applications to 20 minutes at a time take pain relievers over the counter medications such as aspirin ibuprofen um, naproxen sodium or acetaminophen may help relieve pain follow label directions and stop taking the drugs when the pain improves maintain the range of motion of your shoulder after one or two days um, do some gentle exercises as directed by your doctor or physical therapist to help maintain your shoulders range of motions and inactivity can cause stiff joints in addition favoring your shoulder for a long period can lead to frozen shoulder a condition which your shoulder becomes so stiff you can barely move it so next elbow forearm wrist and hands the elbow joint made up of the humerus and its articulations with the radius and ulna stabilizes the forearm and positions the arm in space so the elbow moves through range of motion providing both forearm motion and um, inclination normal range of movement examination clearly includes out of the joints is the root of the problem since their soreness as well as pain in the elbow area so the multiple joints of the wrist and how allow for the exceptional dexterity of movement however the wrist and the hand have a large number of relatively unprotected bones that are vulnerable to injury the wrist includes the distal ulna and distal radius as well as the carpal bone so um the thumbs movements in the opposite to the hand and forearm inflection extension abduction and adduction so here are the example of injury the elbow sprain so an elbow sprain can occur when your arm is quickly bent or twisted in a non-natural position so elbow sprain can happen when you fall with your arms stretched out such as when playing sports your elbow is hit very hard such as during a car accident and when you are doing sports and overusing your elbow so this type of um, injury uh, caused the elbow sprain in the physical activity that involve the elbow like repeat lifting or operating heavy equipment that can cause an elbow sprain so to avoid this injury we should always be accountable for such a safe work environment and procedures as well as all workplace people or athletes must be liable for correctly using their bodies and staying fit for work so so there are recognition and management of elbow sprain so your health care provider will likely instruct you to follow rise to help reduce pain and swelling so next the spine um, is one of the most important parts of your body without it you could not keep yourself upright or even stand up it gives your body structure and support it allows you to move about freely and to bend with flexibility the spine is also designed to protect your spinal cord. 
So, the spinal cord injuries may result from damage to the vertebrae, ligaments, or discs of the spinal column or to the spinal cord itself. So, a traumatic spinal cord injury may stem from a sudden traumatic blow to your spine that fractures, dislocates, crushes, or compresses one or more of your vertebrae. So, the spine is vital for the health because it holds a standing and connects the many components of our bones including our head, chest, pelvis, shoulders, arms, and legs. When the spine injury, it damages the tight bundle of cells, nerves that send and receives the signal from the brain and the rest of the body. So, the, there are the example of injury, the tetraplea. The tetraplea, sometimes referred to as Quadriplea is a term used to describe the inability to voluntarily move the upper and lower part of the body. So, the areas of impaired mobility usually include the fingers, hands, arms, chest, legs, feet, and toes, and may or may not include the head, necks, and shoulders. So, um, the cause of this injury is to paralyze and the cervical spinal cord. To prevent this injury, we should always wear a proper suit and we are driving or riding a motor vehicle. So, here are the recognition and management of tetraplea. The treatment of tetraplea often focuses on managing pain and other symptoms and limiting the complications of the condition. So, next. Thorax and abdomen. In humans and other hominids, the thorax is the chest regions of the body between the neck and the abdomen. Along with its internal organs and other contents, it is mostly protected and supported by the rib cage, spine, and shoulder girdle. Injuries to the chest and abdomen are often more subtle in presentation than other injuries, such as an acute ligament rupture. So, the thoraco-abdominal injuries are uncommon and catastrophic events can occur if an intra-abdominal or intra-thoracic injury is unrecognized. So, to, aware, uh, to awareness of the organs that can be injured and how such injuries may present is the best defense against missing potentially life-threatening thoracic and abdominal trauma. So, the thorax and abdomen contains the inner organs and the other parts of the body's natural chest region, which is located, located here between neck and also the belly. The ribcage, spine, and the shoulder muscles guide and promote it the most. To reduce the danger from thoracoabdominal injuries, activities might have appropriate protective equipment that will be worn. Here are the example of injury. The blunt abdominal trauma. So, blunt abdominal trauma usually results from motor vehicle collisions, MVCs, assaults, recreational accidents, or falls. The most common injured organs are the spleen, liver, retroperitoneum, small bowel, kidneys, bladder, choleric tomb, diaphragm, and pancreas. So, um, the most prevalent causes of blunt abdominal injuries are falls from great heights and attacks. So, here are the recognition and management of blunt abdominal trauma. The treatment of patient with blunt abdominal injury requires the routine ABCs or the airway breathing and circulations. Once the airway is protected, it is mandatory to protect the cervical spine after the primary survey is complete. Patients who are compotensive require aggressive fluid resuscitation. So, next. And lastly, the head. Head in human anatomy, the upper portion of the body consisting of the skull with its coverings and contents, including the lower jaw. It is attached to the spinal column by way of the first cervical vertebra, the atlas, and connected with the trunk of the body by the muscles, blood vessels, and nerves that constitute the neck. The term also is used to describe the anterior or four parts of animal other than humans. So, the head injuries are damage to the skull, skull or brain caused by trauma. So, the head is also important because it is one of the largest 
and most complex organs in the human body. The head injury is any trauma to the brain, skull, or skull that may cause comatose or other brain injury. So, example of injury, the skull fracture. So, it is a break in the skull bone that surrounded the brain and the symptoms of the injury is the brain damage that may be more severe than in people with the head injury. So, here the recognition and management of the skull fracture. Most skull fracture will held by, by here are the recognition and management of the skull fracture. Most skull fractures will heal by themselves, particularly if there's simple linear fractures. The healing process can take many months, although any pain will usually disappear in around 5 to 10 days. If you have an open fracture, antibiotics may be prescribed to prevent an infection developing. So, that's all. Next. A summary of recognition and management of specific injuries and condition is for preventing the fracture, sprain, and dislocation and other injuries in sports or for the people that can cause an injury. So acute and chronic injuries are those injuries that have many times spent on injury prevention sooner or maybe later an injuries of course. So, by the term sports injuries, it is the kind of injuries that most common occur during sports or exercise. The recognition and management of the foot is an essential part of patient care. The foot injuries are not life-threatening and it can be extremely painful. The strongest tibia that is more medial as well as the thinner fibula that is more medial make both ankles as well as lower leg the knee and related structures is not intended to have an all anatomy analysis um, of all the components of the knees rather it must be intended to include some perspective and comprehension about the structures of such knee even though thy hip grow, groin including pelvis are less likely to be injured than the knee and lower line they are still subjected to significant damage from a number of sports more often than any other joints the shoulder complex is the most complicated the humerus also its expressions with the ridges and ulna form the elbow joint which helps maintain the forearm and arranges the arm into area the wrist and hands, numerous muscles allow for extraordinary flexibility in movement. Many sensory motor people bodies are covered by the spine segment with athletics injuries to the thorax and abdomen also occur. Any trauma to the skull, skull or brain is considered a head injury. So we should careful to prevent um, this severe injury that we can cause any time and so we should be careful for what we do or what we uh, we got to get an injury so that's all thank you